Hello everybody, my name is Kublin, I'm bringing you guys View Replay Cast number 47, and it will be official guys, it will be official, you guys probably don't care about anything I'm about to say because this will be in the future, and the future is awesome, but uh, I'm officially not going to record stuff on, or post stuff on Thursday, because I need a day to rest, and oh man, it's, it's, it's quite difficult to keep, like, you know, continuous posting stuff sometimes, so I'll just make Thursday my official don't cat, or don't post stuff day. I might make something special, I'll say I'll, I'll, like, I'll, pa I'll post something else, but I don't really know. Just know, just know that on Thursdays you guys oh, shouldn't be expecting a video from me. But every other day, except for Thursdays and Sundays of course, because uh, Sunday I'm a little bit busy with the SECS, um, you guys can expect no videos from me, but every other day you guys, or sorry, every other day you can expect a video from me. So that's, what's that? That brings it down to five videos a week, which I think, I think is definitely manageable. I think I can manage that. I should be able to manage that. Anywho, uh, this is a view replay, view replay cast. Like I said, before, uh, like I always say with the view replay cast, I'm not gonna tell you guys who sent it in until the very end because the general assumption is the person who sent it in is probably on the team that won, and we don't want no spoilers here because spoilers are very bad and they make things not fun and they just spoil things, which is like, it's like, it's like telling you guys the ending to, it's like telling you guys the ending to Call of Duty. I mean, somebody dies. Whoa, whoa, sorry guys, spoiler alert. I'm sorry. No, no, no hard feelings for anybody who plays Call of Duty still. But it, it used to be cool, in my personal opinion. It, it just kind of fell off because it's the same thing over and over. Anyway, I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm lingering. So let me stop lingering and let these uh, let me let these guys go ahead and finish picking up their heroes, which they're lingering actually. So it's it's a random draft. So they're taking their sweet sweet time trying to pick out who they want to get. And I see a Spearbreaker. I also see a Tinker. I see a Death Prophet and a Jar Ranger. Uh, yeah, that, that looked like a pretty nice pull, a pretty nice random draft pull. Um, but a first pick on uh, of Tinker, that kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of those risky things because uh, if Tinker can't get his or can't get his boots to travel, he can't do anything. But once he gets boots to travel, he does everything. So it's it's a give and take. It really depends on the Tinker player. It'll be interesting to see how he does with that. But typically, people who pick Tinker, they they know what they're doing. <laughs> Of course, I say it with a grain of salt because I'm, I'm not too sure what we'll be seeing in this game. Uh, we also see a Naga. Cool. Haven't seen Naga in quite a while. I am. I are happy Prepare to see Naga. So let's see free camera. Let's go with that. And we are underway. So let's let's go ahead and uh, do introduction start on the dire side since I'm right on over here. Start off with this Jar Ranger or Drow Ranger. How do you pronounce that? You know, phonetics and stuff. I'm, I'm not good at that, but but it it sometimes helps. And we see hashtag or XX. <laughs> XX hashtag hashtag XX on that uh, Drow Ranger. Yes, that's right, guys. Pronouncing every single word in that name because I'm freaking awesome. That's why not. Uh, why not? Moving over to Naga, we see Drizzy Dragon Senior on her on this Ogre Magi, which I'm actually kind of concerned about because Ogre Magi. Uh, oh boy, I, e either I'm just that bad at Ogre Magi or he just he just he just like has a point to where he just becomes useless. Uh, we see. So Capex, oh the Ogre Magi, and of course guys, it's probably because I'm very bad at Ogre Magi. Now moving on to Death Prophet, we see CG Nick 007 on that Prophet. Moving over to, I'm oh, sorry, on that Nature, no, Death Prophet. Moving over to Jakiro, we see Midas, or Midas, Midas, Midas. And last but not least, wait, did I already get the Naga? Hold on. Yeah, okay, that was everybody. All right, moving on to Dire Side. Because uh, the dire side needs the to be introduced too. We begins. see angry bastard on that. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there. It took me a while, but I see what you did there. <laughs> Get it, bastard. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Spectre. We see fire dragon 715 on that. On that Spectre. On this sniper in the mid, we see snatch on the sniper. Moving over to the top lane on this tinker. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is very concerning. Uh, on this tinker, we see the inspired. The imprisoned one, sorry, the imprisoned one on the tinker, and last but not least, on this spin, we see Pace, <clears throat> Pace Paceslow on that spin, and I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and go on a limb and take a look at these items so I can see what we got. Yeah, okay. Um, we we have one instance of boost first, which is not really all that bad. I mean, it's it's okay, but it was just spin by be going out. Hold on, spin in a little bit of trouble. I think he bit off a little bit more. He chew. He took a point in great cleave first. Oh man, such a bad play. Ogre Magi gonna come forward anyway. He he might actually might die. Tinker might be able to get the last one on top of him. 
Uh, nope, tower goes, or he dies to a tower. First blood gets split between those two guys, so all that gold goes to them. Meanwhile, down bottom, we got Naga. Look like she tried, oh, look, she has her mirror illusion, mirror images. Oh, oh geez. Okay, guys. Like, like, like I said, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and, um, and, and just assume that this is a this is this is like one of those games where these guys are like kind of getting to a level where they're starting to understand things. Like I see a lot of the players don't have like a thousand healing salves or everybody has boots first or something like that. Um, they decided to go for things more standard. But seeing that Spirit Breaker go boots first, seeing the uh, see the Ogre Magi overextend like that, and also seeing this Fang go for Cleave first, those are those are things that tells me that these guys. Or some of these guys might not really understand what's going on, so I'm, I might spend a little bit more time than I want to explaining things. But it's all fun because the more knowledge I share with you guys, the more knowledge you guys have. And now you know. Anyway, so um, things things to talk about, things to talk about. Of course, boots first on Spirit Breaker. Yeah, Spirit Breaker does a little bit more damage when he moves faster. Cool, but it's not really a lot. It's it's not. It's, it's like it's like four percent or something like that. It's, it's something bad. It, it's it's not a lot, guys. So. Okay, maybe it's not four percent, but it's something. It's something low. Not it. It, it doesn't say, "Hey, go boost first and more for more damage." You should go strength first. Anyway, so he does have boost first. He also has a point of empowering haste, which is technically pushing his lane. Actually, not technically pushing it. It, it is pushing his lane because his creeps move faster. As you can see, this creep right here moves at 325. Hold on, we're seeing Gage have over here. Spectre's trying to run away. She will be able to get away, just barely with her life intact. Meanwhile, Spirit Breaker, he won't be able to get away. If only he had a point to have a charge. Actually, nope, nope. And that only lasts three seconds. Okay. Yeah, no, two seconds. Well, it's on level one that. Anyway, like I said about Spirit Breaker, talking about the creeps. Uh, the creeps move faster on their side. That's basically going to push our lane. That's 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 the basic gist of it. That is the very bare bones basic gist of it. As we can see right here, this creep right here moves at 344, and also has plus two armor. Somebody has a Basilius. Yeah, Naga. Oh no, Naga. Spectre has a Basilius turned on, so that's basically going to push the lane as well. Um, these guys are doing pretty much everything they can do to push the lane, which is, you know. Typical, typical to uh, guys who are still trying to understand the game. I'll, I'll, I'll say it like that. I'll say it like that because I, I don't. I don't want to come off as, as condescending towards anybody, any of the players inside the game. But I mean, it has to be said. Meanwhile, on top we see Spin going down. Um, yeah, Ogre Magi got a stun off of one. No, Drown J will just auto attack him to death. Ogre Magi, it looks like he did possibly get a stun off, a stun or two off of him. That's too sure. Totally wasn't. <coughs> excuse me. Totally wasn't there. I can see it. <laughs> oh boy, I need water. <clears throat> I'm dying over here, guys. Ah, cool blue died. So as far as uh, like, or, yeah, as far as what we're seeing around the map, Spearbreaker finally has a point of his charge. As usually, as Spearbreaker, you want to um, max your pretty much max everything except for your empowering haste. Uh, the the general thought is your empowering haste doesn't really help you out all that much as far as your ganks go. Because when Spearbreaker goes to gank, he's going to use his charge. He's going to go for like try to get a bash or two, and then he's going to pop his ulti and try to do as much damage as possible. Empowering haste lets you move faster, which you already be there, so you don't really need to move all that much faster. And uh, Spearbreaker cancel on the charge. Wow, waste of mana, and he has no region right now. He's actually having his courier bringing himself a tango, and a, uh, he's starting to build himself power trades. So cool, Spearbreaker. At, at, le at least he's, at least he's building towards something. I'll say that much. Moving on to Sniper. Sniper is building himself. It looks to be a yeah. He's building himself a Wraith Band. Uh, he bought the Wraith Band recipe before he bought everything else. Okay. All right. So basically, recipes are the most useless thing in the in the entire game unless you have an orb effect. Unless you have an orb effect, you're building a uh, helmet of dominator. Not helmet of dominator. Mask of madness. Dying and you have to buy that recipe. You shouldn't buy that recipe first. Alright, sorry. Um, you can buy that recipe first. You, you can call it, or you can justify that. That recipe costs a thousand gold versus the Morbid Mass, which costs nine hundred gold. And uh, you can't get life steal anyway when you have an orb effect already, because orb effects don't stack, guys. But ores and orb effects do stack. That's right. That's right. Just not. Just drop the knowledge bomb for you guys. Heck yeah. There you go. Masking Madness recipe one thousand. Morbid Mass nine hundred. So. Yeah, long story short though, long story short, what was I talking about? Okay, let's talk about something important. Oh yeah, recipe. Sniper on the recipe, so that's very concerning. Meanwhile, we got Spirit Breaker going all in on top of Jakiro. Jakiro might be in a little bit of trouble. He is getting, or he is dropping a trail of poop by the looks of it because he just pooped his pants. He was like, holy crap, I just almost died. And uh, Naga wasn't even there. Uh, Naga is level 3, which is not all that high. Spectre has 12 lots hits, which is actually pretty nice, but has she died? No, she hasn't died, surprisingly. Naga's gonna come in, try to go for the kill on top of Spirit Breaker, but she can't do nearly enough damage. Um, I honestly think Naga just need to chill back and just keep farming because uh, she's doing a decent job, or her and Jakiro are doing a decent job uh, basically zoning out Spectre and Spirit Breaker. Just make sure they can't do anything. Meanwhile, Spin is running home. 
or he's just standing here. He's like, bro, I can't do anything. I'm taking so much damage. He has two points of his cleave, and guys, the, the the basic reason why going cleave first on Sven is a bad idea, it's a horrible idea, is because well, Sven doesn't have a lot of damage to begin with. His damage right now is 69. Let's go ahead and round that up to 70. Heck, let's be generous. Let's let's round that up to eight or 100. Let's 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 round that way up. Say Sven's base damage was 100, and he had a cleave of 35%. That's 35 extra damage. That's, that's, you know, that's a decent amount of damage. That's a decent amount of damage dealt on the cleave. But Sven doesn't have 100 damage. He has 66 damage. Which translates into... Oh, jeez. I can't do the number fast enough. It should be like 3 times 6. Something like that. Uh, 3 times 6. What's 3 times 6? Guys, what's 3 times 6? Is that 18? I don't know. 18 damage or something like that. Whatever. Top tower is under attack. And uh, we got Tinker going down on top. Jarwin is able to finish him off. Meanwhile, Spectre going, uh, trying to go man mode on top of Naga. Naga just backing away. Uh, they both just backed away with their with their damage. But Naga, actually, Spectre did take her early points off her Desolate, which is actually really nice. I mean, she can do a little bit more damage. She can actually stack up against Naga in a man fight. Uh, Naga's, hit, Naga's hitting for 68, and Spectre's hitting for about the same. Plus 20 pure damage, so. She de she'll definitely win out in those fights. If they just go strictly toe to toe, but if there's any, any other interference, and yeah, yeah, Spectre might be going down. Uh, Spin does go down on top. He dies too. It looks to be an auto attack from Draw Ranger, who is finally level seven. So she has her ulti. She has all her damage. She's gonna be up here just killing these guys left and right. Uh, we got Spectre going down now. Bottom Spear Breaker. I think he charged to try to save his ally's life, but he couldn't do anything. Now he's a very afraid. He's gonna hang him behind his tower and not do anything. Um, and that's that's actually one of the bigger things to point out as well. Um, this that's a lot of not doing things uh, going on so far. Basically, Tinker. I, I don't know how far he's from Bruce's travel. Uh, he's he's not Radiant's even going for Bruce's travel, which is, is of course of course questionable. Looks like he's going for a soul ring first, but he doesn't have that kind of farm. He only has seven last hits, and I think he's died once. Yeah, he's died once. He has an assist, but he's died once. That means he doesn't. He's not gonna have that. Uh, we got Jakiro getting killed on Spirit Breaker, feeling pretty baller from, or feeling like a baller. He's gonna go ahead and walk around Inspector's Goopy Goop or whatever it's called, and just chill out for a second. Meanwhile, Sniper's doing a really good job. Uh, mid, I, I would commend Sniper basically saying, uh, yeah, he spammed his ulti. I keep hearing it. So if he keeps using his ulti on top of Death Prophet. Just make sure she just feels all the wrath of Sniper. And Death Prophet's actually gonna try to go on top of Sniper. She can't. She she won't be able to actually kill. She's not gonna be able to actually kill. Sniper has to turn around and just go for the kill. I think he has enough range to actually outrange her ghost. But just to be safe, he goes ahead and backs away anyway. Meanwhile, Jordan defeats himself up power charge as you guys see over there. Jakiro builds himself a magic wand. Spectre taking a lot of damage, but she has one point inside of her dispersion, so she can actually be a little bit of survival. She didn't take nearly or she she took just about the same amount of damage, but she, she didn't take as much. Speedbreaker is charging down bottom, but he's not level 6, which is actually a big, mis or a, a big problem for these guys, because he's not level 6, and Spectre's low HP, so she can't really go in. She is level 6, though, so she can't actually go for an ulti if she has to mana for it, but she actually might uh, go down. Yeah, she will be going out to Naga. Not the thing that you want to have, in, or want to have. Dyer's you want... Tower what is, is that? Oh, attack. that's a plane. Is that a plane? That was, that's a very loud plane. Is under attack. Uh, ba basically, you don't want your carry to die like that. Uh, Spectre is definitely the carry in this game. Spin can be a carry too. Spirit Breaker, he can be a kind of carry, but it's it's all about Spectre because Spe and like if this game goes really late, then Spectre's they're gonna be looking to Spectre to do all the damage because she just does a crap ton of damage in the late game. Meanwhile, uh, Death Prophet trying to go for the kill on top of Sniper. She gets the kill. Spectre gonna be spout scouting out his uh, Death Prophet because she does walk across the uh, the slope. Stifling with Spectre, Dyer's Spectral Dagger, but she didn't get hit by it, so she's not gonna be living trouble by herself. Meanwhile, Spirit Breaker is down bottom, he's trying to go toe to toe with Naga, and Naga turns out, throws the net, and just leaves him to his own devices. Meanwhile, on top, we got Jorge getting a kill over on top of Sven. Not too surprised, to be honest. Sven is gonna be having a very hard time in this game. Um, he, he went for the glove of face first. I mean, I, I don't know what more I can say outside of. Uh, he, he might want to think rethink his build completely. Um, typically on spins what you see is uh, you see like a max Stormhammer, maybe a max Warcry, and then a whole bunch of stats. Especially if they're going for carry spin. Cleave you don't really get into like, you know, maybe after you maybe after you did armor, if you decide to go for armor. Or maybe after you go for something else. Or Spirit Breaker is going to go on top for the kill on top of Naga. He gets the kill, but he will be down to creeps because he decided to stay in farm as opposed to running away like a like a scaredy cat, but he does have enough gold to build his shreds, so he'll have one whole item in his inventory then. Meanwhile, uh, Spectre did rotate mid for, I'm not too sure what reason, Spectre, uh, Spectre Death Prophet going to be taking a little bit of damage coming out from the Sniper. Sniper feeling pretty happy about himself, so throws a shrapnel on top of the tower, and tower takes damage, 35%, OP. Meanwhile, on his top tower, Jorage is just, just, just dishing the damage out. 
She's like, hey bro, I'm just gonna go ahead and do as much damage as I possibly can. Spin goes for a stun, but he's not gonna follow up with anything. That that is probably why he's been uh, having such a hard time. Uh, if you're a spin, if you're a spin, you wanna save your mana as much as you possibly can, unless you, unless you can absolutely get a kill with it. Uh, hold on, speaking uh, speak of the double, we got Spectre popping her ulti, trying to go for the kill on top of uh, on top of Ogre Magi. She thought she can get the kill, but Ogre Magi a little bit too survivable and just turns out throws a stun, and now Spectre's in a lot of trouble. Here's the Death Prophet. Death Prophet will be able to finish her off. And that is the end of the life of a Spectre. Meanwhile, we got Spirit Breaker charging out bottom on top of Tier. He throws out the ult, he's going to be doing quite a bit of damage. But here's the Naga to say no, you shall not pass. Meanwhile, Jorin dies up top somewhere. Oh my gosh, these guys are dying all around the map. Sorry guys, sorry guys, I, I can only move butt so fast, and actually I need to make sure my settings are set correctly. Because uh, if they aren't, if they aren't, then I'll be pretty sad. Oh, nope, okay, cool, they're all good. Alright, they're all turned down. Heck yeah. So like I was saying, um, basically, basically these guys are kind of down all around the place. I think that's more a result of, uh... Well, I, I can't really say what that's more a result of. Jakiro took a lot of damage. Spirit Breaker, he does have a charge. He could charge for Jakiro and actually go for the kill, but he's deciding against it. Very smartly so because Jakiro's running all the way back home. And actually, I saw Spirit Breaker charge. Okay, these guys are going to go on Naga instead. Naga has her ulti. Uh, Spirit Breaker needs to pop out. He doesn't have his ulti up. Naga, just try she was just about to pop her ulti, but she wasn't able to get it out fast enough. Um, need to be a lot, a lot quicker on that um, trigger finger. Death Farm finds himself a region room, picks it up, and walks on back to her middle lane. And uh, actually, this middle lane is. Well, I was about to say the middle lane is dead even, but Sniper just just manhandling Death Prophet, uh, to be honest. Uh, Death Prophet did rotate around a few times. She does have her Arcane Boost, that's cool. But Sniper Sniper has has the superior last hitting. Uh, he has one kill. He's died one time. Death Prophet, okay, never mind. Death Prophet hasn't died yet. So they're they're kind of on, on par. Or they are on par because of that. Sniper, he's doing really good on last hits, but Death Prophet hasn't died yet. She actually has two kills, so she's probably doing a little bit better. Meanwhile, Tinker's going for a laser rocket build, and he's taking a lot of damage. He has a soul ring. He's pretty happy about himself. He feels like a baller, but he might die anyway. Nope, he won't die. He will survive. Actually, these guys are diving pretty hard. He needs to keep running. Oh, man, he's going to keep running. He sees the guys diving in the tower, and he doesn't want to be here anymore. Sayonara is what he said to himself. And Georgia kills that top tower. Region room popped by Death Prophet. Uh, I, think, I think Sniper popped his ulti on top of her. Yeah, he threw his ulti. And uh, whoa, whoa, down bottom, we got a big engagement happening around here. We got Spirit Breaker throwing uh, throw a stone on top of Naga. Radiance Naga popping her ulti when she didn't really need to. Uh, she was pretty much already safe after Jakiro threw the ice path. She could have just walked away, turned around, threw her net on the person who was going to attack her next. And then been perfectly fine, but yeah, she did overreact a little bit. Meanwhile, Sniper taking a lot of damage coming from his ghost. Death Prophet trying to go for the kill. Sniper turns around, throws a shotgun. And the ghost, the ghost, the ghost. Nope, it was just auto attack. I was about to say, the ghosts are going to get him, the ghosts are going to get him, but no, no, it wasn't enough. And Death Prophet taking quite a bit of damage from that tower. Um, if Sniper was there, if Sniper had enough mana for another ulti, she would definitely be dead. Uh, even if she would have killed him. Meanwhile, down bottom, we got these guys taking a lot of damage, coming out from the macro and ice path, and Naga's the one that they want. Spectre just wants one more last auto attack, and she'll be able to- No, she decides not to go for it, she would have definitely had that. If only she had the mana for her ulti, though, she would actually be able to pop that and just go for the kill. Oh, uh, that way, but no, she dies anyway, and Naga- Oh jeez, Naga's like, yo bro, you chase why you chase me, bro? Oh dear. Meanwhile, Tinker dies up top and oh man, things are working out extremely badly for the rating side. Um, I, I honestly don't see this game lasting all that much longer. Uh Jordan's just getting crap ton of farm. Ogre Maje, well he, he's not getting a whole bunch of farm, but he's he's doing decently. Jakira has a mechanism or oh, almost has a mechanism already. Death Prophet, she's doing decently mid versus sniper, and now she has three kills versus snipers, two deaths and one assist, I think. So snipe, well, um, oh, he has one kill. Um, although sniper's doing a decent job, uh, make sure he continuously harasses the crap out of Death Prophet. Death Prophet just doesn't give a care anymore. Uh, she has a bottle. She's picking up all the runes. She's doing a really good job rune hoarding, and uh, sniper's not really doing any of that. So it's just pretty much like every ulti that sniper has. Uh, let's actually do the math of this. Uh, sniper's ulti does 500. Oh, he's actually using it right now. It's, it's all using. Uh, we got a we got a fight happening down bottom. Spectre taking a lot of damage. She can actually reality somewhere else and probably run away. She could have reality top because I think there was somebody top before they uh, before they killed him. That's Jor Ranger. Jor Ranger does buy back. He's like, hey bro, I want to buy back. I want to waste all my gold. I want to delay my shadow blade. And we got Spear Breaker taking a lot of damage. He might be able to run away. He will be able to charge away soon. Ogre Miser trying to get another stun, but he doesn't have enough mana. Naga's another, uh, next net for Naga will be up in five seconds. Spear Breaker almost ending his own life by standing still for a few seconds. Naga's gonna go ahead and die for this. She can. And she throws out the tide. Or she throws out the uh, tidal wave and gets the kill on top of that. Pretty easy stuff for her. Meanwhile, mid sniper is just. 
Fall, he's low, he needs to actually get out of here. That farmer's gonna actually finish him off with just one cryptic swarm, and that'll pretty much in. Uh, that'll pretty much make him a sad sniper. Spin pops his ult, he goes for as much damage as possible. Jordan says, Hey, bro, I can do all the damage as well. Jordan actually gets it close, that's a big mistake. And no, never mind, there she backs away. Spin taking a lot of damage from the tower, he will be going down to the tower. <clears throat> but yeah, that was a huge mistake for Jordan just trying, uh, trying to get closer to Spin. Uh, she thought he was going to be running away, and they decided to stand in man fight, and she actually almost lost. If Spin wouldn't have uh, jerked around the corner, he would actually, or he could have actually potentially got a kill on top of Jordan because Jordan's markmanship it it goes off her completely uh, whenever you get it within a certain range of it. Meanwhile, we see Death Farm finish off Tinker while I was talking about all of that, and. Uh, I mean, like like I said, I, re I really don't see things going well for the Radiant, and I really don't see this game lasting all that much longer. Um, even though I do know the exact time of this game, I'm gonna go ahead and call it. I'm not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, and definitely not saying it's wrong, but I, I don't see this game lasting for another 20 minutes. I'll, I'll, I'll put it like that. 20 minutes at the most. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. It sucks, but yeah, I'd be wrong sometimes. Uh, Spin taking a lot of damage. He needs just one more auto attack on top of Joranger. Joranger actually goes down to the cleave. LOL, 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 LOL. And Spin decides to run away. He's actually still alive. Wow, that brace are OP. Meanwhile, down bottom, we see Jakiro get a kill on top of Spirit Breaker. I thought I saw somebody else go down as well. Uh, Naga went down as well. So Spirit Breaker finished on Naga. Naga. Hold on. Is it true? <clears throat> yep, yeah, Spirit Breaker finished off Naga. And Na Jakiro finished off Spirit Breaker. Anyway, and we got Ogre Magi going down around the corner. Sniper is able to finish, or Spectre is able to finish off with their Spectre Dagger. Uh, it's pretty confusing. Uh, top Tower does get denied by Radiant. Well played on Tinker, I guess? Question mark. But Tinker is like zero. Like, like he's he's so far away from Bucha Travel. He's so far away from actually helping his team do anything that it's not even funny. Uh, um, Rocket Laser Tinker is really cool and all, but even Rocket Radiant's Laser Tinker still builds Bucha Travels uh, just so they can jump into those team fights and get ready to just uh, well help the teams with the team fights. That's. To me, to me, that's the whole idea behind Rocket Lasers, to get you back Radiant's in, or like, get, get you a few items as Tinker, like, get you a bottle, get you a soul ring, and Radiant's then afterwards, uh, get you enough fallen. gold to start, or get you enough gold through kills to start going for uh, other things. That's why, to, um, to start going for your, uh, for your travel. You know, we got Jakiro, he might be going down, Spirit Breaker throws out the ulti, and there's Jakiro, gonna be going out, a few more attacks is all he needs. Mechanism pops, oh my gosh, Jakiro has a mechanism, that's gonna turn the tide to fight. Naga throws out the net, and this is Spirit Breaker's life about to be ended. Jakiro can actually turn around throw the ice path to make sure Spirit Breaker doesn't walk him over. Here's the Ogre Magic from the middle of nowhere, Spirit Breaker trying to run away, he can actually charge across the map. I just wonder if he knows that he can. And he's not gonna charge across the map. Oh my gosh, Spirit Breaker, what are you doing? He eats a he eats a tree and he turns around. Oh man, Ogre Magic just might finish him off. He'll have another stun before the before Spirit Breaker actually runs away. If he doesn't charge right now, but Spirit Breaker does need to charge right now. And there's another stun coming up from Ogre Magic. There's a death. Oh my gosh, wow. That empowering haste, guys. That empowering haste. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Spirit Breaker stays alive. Spirit Breaker makes it out alive. Meanwhile, Jordan is just trying to do as much damage as possible. She's trying to build herself a Shadow Blade. She actually has a goal for it right now. I'm not too sure what she's waiting for. Uh, I, I want, yeah, she definitely had it before the tower went down. Top tower is under attack. Like, like may, maybe she just got it once before the tower went down. Anyway, Spin is up top, just just whacking away at this tower. He's building himself what looks to be a blade mill. Question mark. Uh, I, I, uh, honestly, Blade Mail is not a bad item on top of Spin because a lot of people want to focus him. But uh, with this, with the current meta of having Spin as a carry, or typically, typically seeing him as a carry, um, having a Blade Mail is very, very weird and questionable. So we got Spirit Breaker charging like a boss is gonna go straight in. He gets a kill on top of Naga, and there's you know, Sniper gets a kill on top of Naga, and there's Spirit Breaker just manning up, just killing the crap out of Jakiro. Spectre pops her ulti as well, and she did in reality to anything. But she does see where everybody is, and there's her illusions going away. Poof, they go. And Shadow Blade's up on Joranger. So that, uh, that was probably like the most perfect timing that you could have had for an engagement. Spirit Breaker is like, yo, bro, I'm gonna just I'm just charging at the right possible, most perfect possible time to save the life of, well, was it Tinker? I think Tink, I think it was Tinker, but Tinker died anyway, so. If it was Tinker, then Tinker died anyway, which sucks. But to save the life of my ally, and then... Just like kill everybody around the map. So Spirit Breaker probably feeling pretty happy about that. He does have an Ogre Club. I think he's building, um, oh jeez. He, he's building all strength items. And he's building Mask of Madness afterwards. I, I, I can't really complain too much. Because he does have something else besides just the Mask of Madness. Which is what he's building for. But it's 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 like a cluster crap of items that don't, that haven't built into anything yet. Um, on, honestly, I thought he's going to build a, a Singe before he started building his Mask of Madness. Which I actually, I actually would say, okay, that's cool, that's fair. 
because Assange gives you some really nice uh, stats for strength and also gives you a nice a nice greater cleave or is it is it greater cleave or lesser cleave cleave I think it's lesser cleave I don't know we can find out we can definitely find out together it is a lesser maim lesser maim oh man I said cleave whoops I meant to say maim a lesser maim which basically slows you for okay we'll read it it has a chance to for yeah it has a chance to slow your movement for four seconds by 20 percent actually really nice really nice really nice stuff so Tinker, he doesn't have his ulti yet, so he can't really spam out rockets per se, and he's actually going to be going down around the corner. Naga's coming in, throws out her tidal wave, and it's, yeah, oh, Tinker, Tinker turns around, he's trying to man up, he's trying to go for the kill on Naga, I think he needs to run away now. Uh, he has a laser, he needs to use it. Uh, nope, never, he goes down anyway, Spin is trying to man up, he says, I'm Spin, I can kill all you peoples in like three hits, and he goes down promptly. See, Ogre Match, I thought it was funny. Inspector pops her ulti, she might be able to actually get a kill on top of somebody. Uh, she's not gonna reality to the Ogre Ogremaja is gonna go ahead and make it out scotch free. I think she's using a scout, which I actually like. Like it's it's a big it's a big issue that you see a lot of times with the uh, with people who are still like 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 I said they um they might know a lot about Dota, but from from the play that I'm seeing so far, I can't say I can't say this is like the most impressive stuff that I've seen. Like I said, like I always say about this, no offense to the players. I'm trying to choose my words carefully so I don't offend anybody, but. This is some relatively bad decision making so far um, that I've seen on both sides. Uh, first of all, well, actually more so the radiant side than the dire side. Um, Bloodstone coming up on Bloodstone coming up on Death Prophet. I, I don't think she. Oh yeah, okay, never mind. She has a farm. Why not? Uh, Jarvis, you're building double wraith man. I really don't understand a double wraith man. I think double wraith man is probably one of the worst things I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, not not. I'm I'm not saying this just because I'm saying this on, on this Jarvis, but every time I see it, I always think, why do you go double wraith man? Why don't you just go wraith man Yasha and just call it a day? It's it Yasha builds into something. Wraith man builds into something. You don't need two wraith bands. Ah. Oh man, it's so it's so frustrating to see this, but uh, you see it all the time. You see it a lot in the lower lower levels of play. So people say, oh, double Wraith Band, it gives me a crap ton of damage. No, your draw range, you get a crap ton of damage anyway. Uh, Wraith Band gives you what? It gives her 6 agility plus 3 damage. Cool. So it gives her 9 damage. Yeah, it's not all impressive. Meanwhile, we got a mid engagement happening over. We got Spectre and uh, Sniper on the run. Spectre needs to go ahead and throw her dagger. I don't know if she thinks. I don't. Yeah, I don't think she knows she can actually throw it in the opposite direction. She will be throwing the opposite direction, making it all uh, throwing it towards these guys, slowing down a little bit, trying to run away. Sniper goes down in the process of it all, of all the madness. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Radiance bottom tower. That was the end of the life of Sniper. Meanwhile, down bottom, we got the push coming out from Naga, Jakiro, and Jor Ranger. Uh, these guys are just gonna have fun in this tower. Jakiro, or not Jakiro, Naga's building himself. Uh, I'm sorry, she's building himself a chrysalis. I'm assuming she's building himself a chrysalis. I'm not too sure. She could, she could build face boots. I've seen it before. I've seen people build face boots and arcane boots. Like, like they literally built both and they held onto it for the entire game. It is, yeah, it's not, I don't recommend it. This is not recommended. Speedbreaker is going to go ahead and go for as much damage as possible on top of, on top of, uh, nah, Death Prophet. And this is pretty much where Death Prophet, not Death Prophet, this is pretty much where Spe Speedbreaker, uh, has his, uh, moment. And yes, there you go, guys. He did build Assange. Indeed, he did build Assange. But I totally don't think he needed a Morbid Mask before he finished Assange. Because all it cost was 600 gold. He could have built that Morbid Mask somewhere out in the field later. Uh, meanwhile, we got Nag- uh, not Nag- We got Spin is Tinker trying to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This is Ogre Magic. Ogre Magic going to go ahead and turn around, man up, and get the kill on top of Spin. Spin getting a little bit too close to the sun saying, hey, bro, I have 20 armor. I can- I can definitely survive. The Ogre Magic's like, nope. Meanwhile, on mid, we got Spearbreaker taking a lot of damage from these guys. He will be going down to the Drone Ranger. I'm sorry, to the Jakiro, but Jakiro just caught him an ice path. Macro probably followed up, and Drone Ranger just shot him to death and silenced him as well. He silenced and shot him to death. Meanwhile, we got a uh, Spectre following a Naga. Naga might have to pop roll. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, she might have to pop roll. Spectre ulti might be able to finish her off. Uh, nope, it's not doing nearly enough damage. Why is that hit? That is weird. Spectre's ulti was totally bugged just then. Sniper's gonna go ahead and go for the kill on top of Naga. He gets to kill all the auto attacks in the world. Meanwhile, we got Sniper. He's in a lot of trouble. He really needs help coming off these guys. He needs to pop his magic one as soon as he pops again. Uh, he doesn't pop it. He's trying to go for the ulti instead. Uh, Should have popped that magic one. He might have been able to survive another auto attack. And that'll probably be about it. Because Joranger has, uh, well, she's, she's level 14, so she has two points of her ulti, which means that she attacks for an additional 60 damage. At those longer ranges, and she also attacks that much faster. Crystal's coming up, or Crystal's up on Jar Ranger. Moving on to Jakiro. Jakiro building up Agony Step Through. Not too sure why. I, I honestly think Agony Step Through Jakiro is bad. Oh, cool. Look at my Macro Pyre. It does more damage. So? 
That's all I'll say about it. Until I die from it. And then, and then once I die from it, I'm always complaining about how Macropy is OP, because it is. But still, it's such a bad ability. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe if Macropy burned you, like, like it's stuck with you after you got out of it. And then I'll say, oh yeah, it's cool. It, it sticks with you for two more ticks. That's pretty cool. Anyway, Speed Breaker once tries to have drones, but he decides to cancel and farm some creeps. Wrong spot to actually do that. He's going for Vladimir's offering as well. Oh man, I don't know. Oh, geez, he's going for Vlad. Anyway, we got Speed Breaker going down around the corner because he's going for Vlad. I'll say that much. And we got Tinker trying to pop that, pop that March Machine. It's only level 1 March Machine. He will be going down around the corner. These guys don't really care how much damage March Machine does. But you're actually juking all those bots by standing still like a boss. But that March Machine is only level 1, guys. That's not, that's not going to keep these guys from doing diddly squat. Um, so it's, it's not gonna keep the dire from doing daily squat. They're gonna keep pushing wherever they want to push. Tinker can't do jack squat to stop him. Meanwhile, we got Dyer's Sven still trying to build up his blade attack. mail. He is very poor. Actually, no, he has blade mail. Whoa. Okay, cool. Good job, Sven. I was, I was just talking about how poor you were. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and look at the net worth. This is not, this is sorted by uh, highest to lowest, by the way. And that pretty much shows you the whole. Oh man, Sven, why? Oh jeez. <laughs> So Sven buys a blade mail, pops his blade mail, and starts attacking creeps. I mean, it theoretically it should make you do more damage, but it doesn't. Meanwhile, anyway, we got Sniper. He's in a lot of trouble. He has no way to escape. He has a Yasha, though, which I actually really like. Um, he's actually he's actually doing quite a bit of damage to the Ogre Magi. He gets killed up Ogre Magi, and Naga is able to finish him off with a uh, with a Tide thing. Rip Tide. The Tinker totally needs to get a point on his ulti. I'm not too sure what's up with this. And Sven is like, yo bro, I'm popping my blade mail, I'll take no damage, right? No, that's not how it works. Basically how blade mail works is you still take the damage, but you also reflect the damage as well to the enemy. Or to, to the person who dealt the damage to you. So you still have to be very cautious about when, or about how much damage you take. And Sven's gonna go ahead and pop his blade mail once again to try to farm with these guys. And they're still doing a crap ton of damage. He pops his ulti as well, and I think he still might die. Nope, nope, he needed one more attack. Honestly, I, th I, th I think if I went to player perspective, I, I would see Sven reading the blade mill thing right now. That that's what it looks like he was doing. And he's buying boots again. Whoa, whoa, what is this? Oh, jeez, Sven, what are you doing? Sven, go home, you're drunk. And then Sven dies. Meanwhile, around the corner, we got. Uh, meanwhile, in the middle river, we got a little standoff going on back and forth. I haven't seen Naga pop her Oh, I've seen Naga pop her ulti once. But she can actually pop her ulti right now and just go for a quick kill on top of Tinker, or they can just walk up and get the kill, quick kill on top of Tinker. There's no way in heck that Tinker's gonna be getting away from these guys if they do just decide to march mid. And he finally doesn't have a point inside his rearm, but he has no mana to actually do anything really. He has a soul ring, I haven't seen a pop it just yet. And Ogremizer is just hanging on top. He has the Agatha Scepter up, so that's a huge item for Ogremizer to have. It will basically give him a lot of stats and also give him, well, the extra chance to. Multicast, which multicasting is OP as crap, and also gives him another stun. By the way, that's, that's another big thing. It costs a lot of mana, the extra stun, but I mean, it's still another stun. He can essentially chain stun you by himself, just like that. But the only thing about it is, like, he has a mana. He ha he has to have the mana regen to back it up, and Organizer definitely doesn't have the mana regen to back it up. Uh, he's actually going to be taking, or about to be going down. Speed Breaker is charging, but I think he's on a level 1 charge, if I'm not mistaken. No, level 4 charge, okay. So he's, he's charging up the maximum speed. Organizer just changed Sun and the crap out of Spectre. Spectre backing away because she doesn't want to be in this world anymore. Meanwhile, Speed Breaker's like, yo, bro, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. We're going in. Uh, there's no way Organizer can actually escape this. He can actually turn around and throw out a fire. That's really about it. He's taking all the damage in the world, and Speed Breaker will be able to finish him off. No more attack is all he needed, and that's one more attack is all he got. Tinker throwing on, throwing on a few rockets, but these guys really don't get much of a care for it because Jakira has a mechanism. So that's basically giving everybody in that area a bunch of regen, a bunch of free regen, and it's also, if they really need it, they can pretty much nullify completely all the damage that Tinker did. Because don't forget guys, uh, for e uh, every hero has a built-in 25% uh, magic resistance, except for Meepo. Meepo has a built-in 35% magic resistance, which is pretty freaking cool. But that basically means that uh, any damage you see on these numbers right here, you have to reduce it by 25%. So Rocket, Rocket does 325 damage, 25% less of that will actually be uh, 75 plus a, plus, a, plus a few more numbers or something like that. And we got, hold on, we got Spectre, oh, no, we got Deathbomb coming in, throwing her, throwing her silence, throwing out her ghost, trying to get the kill on top of this uh, sniper. Sniper's like, yo bro, I'm just going to kill you. I'm just going to flat out kill you. And now, uh, Spooper actually might be able to finish off. He needs 14 more seconds. He has a blood on his but it's not really going to do much. He's building Sanji Yasha as well. There's a Bloodstone getting popped by Death Prophet. I didn't know she had it. So Sniper's going to finish her off. And now Sniper's going to be going, going down. 
Meanwhile, uh, Spectre decided or uh, managed to build herself up a Vanguard. Radiant's She's getting close and closer to that defusal blade, attack. which actually is a really huge thing to consider. Basically, uh, Radiant's Vanguard would be really oh, it's fortified. nice because it, it gives her that region that she so so desperately needs. It also gives her some nice uh, some nice some nice HP. It, it doesn't give her anything else outside of that. It doesn't really transition well into a late game because Jorans is still going to hit for like seven thousand damage. So blocking set me of that is not really going to do much for me. But it's still nice for it's still at least something for her to have. And uh, she didn't manage to farm that. Like I said, she's going to fuse the blade as well. We got Spear Breaker in a little bit of trouble. He's getting caught. He's getting he's getting ganked in the in the middle of the nowhere, and he goes down. And uh, we got someone else go down. We got Ogre Magic and a kill on top of Spectre. Spectre went down as well. Dyer's Not to show Spectre was doing that way out there. Oh yeah, she's pushing. Yep, yeah, never mind. Like I said before, though, Vanguard is still really nice. It gives us that region. It gives us that nice survivability. But it's it's really more of a mid game oriented item, and we're getting closer and closer to the end of the mid game. We're getting to the point where Joran's just starting to do more damage than she knows what to do with. Uh, she has a crystal, she has a Yash, and she has a Shadow Blade, but she can actually still die pretty darn fast if she doesn't have the support of Ally. She actually might be going down. That's all to come off the sniper. Does full damage. She gets a kill on top of Joran. Well, it doesn't do full damage, but I think it's level 16. Yeah, level 16, level 18 sniper. Wow, he's been farming a lot. But he hasn't transferred his items outside of his Yasha though. Uh, Yasha is the last biggest item I've seen over him. He's, he's going to be like a sole carrier of his team. Um, one, recommend, one, one recommended item a sniper could build right now will be a uh, Maelstorm. To, so, because he's going to be fighting a lot of creeps and just trying to push everything back. And also be really nice versus all the illusions coming up from Naga. And uh, if if Joranger decides to go for main style, it'll help out with her illusions as well. But Jorange looks like she's going to go for a full Daedalus before she actually goes for a Manta style. And Sniper's going to go ahead and build up his Manta style. That's a complete Manta style. So he's going for full damage, he's going for full everything. Gets himself some extra stats, gives himself those illusions, gives himself some way to juke everything. He actually pops his Manta style and just uses it to farm. So he can actually use it to get the kill on top of Naga. Naga is in a lot of trouble. She needs to go ahead and pop her ulti. If she doesn't pop her ulti now, she'll be going down. Uh, there's an ulti coming off of Spectre, and Spectre will be slowing her as well. Spectre might be able to finish her off. He wants to kill throwing and macro probably throwing her everything. He's trying to go for the kill. Spectre able to get the kill on top of that Naga. Or sorry, on top of that. Uh, yeah, Spectre able to get the kill on top of that Naga. So Spectre feeling pretty happy about that. Naga should have just popped her ulti and kept running. I mean, the cooldown only is two minutes, which is not all that bad. But. Uh, yeah, she, um, anyway. Naga built us up a recipe for the chrysalis. Is that a full chrysalis? Oh. That always confuses me. I mean, I, I, I know I should know, I know I should know how many pieces a chrysalis has, but I totally, totally forget if it's like, if it's just these two plus a recipe or something else. But it's obviously just those two plus a recipe. Ogre Magic picking himself up a kill on top of Spectre, getting those multicasts, I would assume, that multicast OP. And Tinker, Tinker, how close are you to the shovel? He is not going for Booster Travel, he's going for it to be either a four staff or a Dagon. I hope it's not a Dagon. Uh, anyway, we got Tinker taking a lot of damage on the corner. George is just doing all the damage to the wall to the illusion of Sniper. And she's actually trying to catch up with one of them. And she actually goes for one uh, for a different one. She actually turns around and tries to go for the kill or get, tries to go for the kill on top of Tinker. Tinker uses the rearm, able to rearm himself completely, but he's out of mana now and he goes down to the uh, flame breath and pretty much everybody died. Uh, Speedbreaker is charging that uh, Jakiro. I think he's going for Rashawn. And he might be able to get the kill. He gets the ulti off here, he'd definitely be able to get this kill. Kill goes down around the corner. Meanwhile, Roshan, nah, Roshan just got charged. That was really about it. Naga's gonna go ahead and try to go for the kill on top of Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker, he, he should be fine. He should be fine. He can survive this. Come on, Spirit Breaker, don't let me down. Don't let me down, bro. You can do it. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Okay, he's good. If Naga gets in the little net, he's dead, of course. But Naga could potentially pop her ulti and then go for it, but she probably... She, the the person playing Naga is probably not thinking in that mindset right now. And Sven is going to be going for. I, I really do hope it's not a Vanguard. I really do hope it's not a Vanguard, but it could be a heart, like just a straight up heart. Which at this point, I think he need he doesn't need like he, he needs. What Sven needs right now is damage, so he can actually do a lot of damage. Just kill Joranger before she can actually do anything. He can throw a stun and then show up and just punch her in the face like two times and she'll die. But he doesn't have any of that. Uh, we got Spirit Breaker charging on top of Naga. Naga did use a net on top of Spectre. And Spectre's going to go ahead and turn around, throw out the dagger. And Naga's taking all the damage in the world. She needs a pop ulti now. We got a Diffuser Blade used by Spectre. These guys will be able to get this kill. There's no way Naga's going to be able to make it out of this. And as soon as I say that, she'll probably be able to make it out of this. Because I jinx everybody, guys. That's how I do. That's how I roll. And we got Naga. Naga. Will she be going down? Come on, Spirit Breaker. He might, he might use his ulti. I hope he doesn't use his ulti. Spectre does miss completely with that dagger, but she does, that does make her move a little bit faster. And she's able to get the kill. Meanwhile, Ogre Magic around the corner. These guys can actually turn around and go for the kill on top of him. 
Uh, double stun coming out for Ogre Mother. I think he chained those. Not he chained those. A sniper turns around, throws out the ulti. The spirit breaker is going on a charge and throwing out the ulti as well. Beautiful coordination coming from these guys. Spectre is doing all the damage. Well, she will be, uh, Tinker will be able to finish off. Uh, finish off the Ogre Mother. And now these guys will be on full retreat because they're silenced and they're also very afraid. They don't want to die just yet. Spin pops his blade mail. He's actually doing a lot of damage to that Death Prophet because Death Prophet can't do any damage to him because, well, she can, do, she can still do damage to him, but. She's doing damage back to herself. So then getting the stun on top of Jakiro, he's gonna go ahead and turn around man mode up on top of that Jakiro. Jakiro goes down. No tornado stick, no, no tornado stick just yet, so he can't really he can't really stop it from happening. Spin, I think Spin's just, just spamming the crap out of his blade mode. That's what's all he's doing. What's this say? What's this? I, I I honestly can't necessarily say that's like the worst thing in the world because it has a 12 second cooldown, but but come on, I mean just, just save it. You don't have to use it every single time. I honestly think Sven thinks it gives him more damage, which it definitely doesn't. Uh, the active ability on Blade Mail, as you guys, or as most of you guys might know, uh, returns any damage you take to the unit that dealt the damage the last 4.5 seconds. That doesn't actually increase your damage output at all. So we got an army of snipers running away. Nobody's able to, will be able to catch up. We'll catch up to them. We got Spirit Breaker charging the crap out of, spirit, uh, out of the Death Watch. She does. Uh, oh, I heard Spirit Breaker ulti. Nope, no ulti. Okay. I could have sworn I had a Spirit Break ulti, but it wasn't a Spirit Break ulti. Uh, Naga's using that Chrysalis, gonna lose a little bit more damage, it's really bad. It's time to go and turn around, try to man up on top of his Naga. He, if Spirit Break uses the ulti on the, on the right Naga, then he'll be able to get, or th these guys will be, able, will be able to turn around and get the kill on top of him. But they don't know which one's which, which is why I said like having a Maelstone would actually be really nice because the Maelstone will bounce through those illusions and do a lot more damage to the illusions and possibly just kill him in like two arcs. Of course, of course, depending on how much HP, or how much HP uh, Naga actually has, and Naga actually makes a big mistake of actually continuing to chase, and she will be going down if she doesn't pop ulti right now. And she, Naga's never popped her ulti in those engagements. Uh, a lot of times, Naga could have just completely flat out saved her life just by popping the ulti. That's the second time that I knew I've seen. Maybe she's done, or maybe she's died because of it before a few times. And there's a uh, Daedalus up on top of Jar Ranger. Not all that impressive. I mean. I I guess I'm jaded. I, I expect to see a Daedalus, I expect to see a Manta style, and I also expect to see a butterfly already up on spec or already up on Draw Ranger by the 40 minute mark, especially considering the fact that she has so much gold. It's like, hey anti mage, how's that gold taste? That's what uh, that's that's what uh, Draw Ranger should be saying or should be reacting right now. We got Spin getting caught out. He's gonna be taking all the damage in the world. Get CC to death. He threw out a beautiful stun, but there was nobody else here to follow up, and he just died all by himself. The Rogue Knight, the Rogue Knight guys, he goes down because it is nighttime, and he must go to sleep. Actually, it's daytime. Well, it's daytime in the game. It's nighttime here. While I am recording this, because I do record the the day before. Back to pop ulti. I think she's using a scout. Not too, not not the best use of uh, ability at all. Um, but Spirit Breaker charges, I don't know what he went for, but he didn't Dyer's continue going for it. And I'm, I'm actually really curious to see what Spirit Breaker is going for. He has one belt of strength, I hope he's not going for a Basher. Because Basher, you can't build a Basher on Spirit Breaker. If I'm not mistaken, which I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not mistaken. Like, like this, it won't let you build a Basher on Spirit Breaker. So the question is, what could he be going for? Hmm, maybe another Sanj? And then go for a Heaven's Halibur? He's building both? Or he could just disassemble the Sanj and Yasha, use the Sanj for a Heaven's Halibur and use the Yasha for a Manta style. That'd be a really nice transition. I totally done that before. It's pretty cool. It's pretty efficient. And it makes you feel like a boss because you can just like disassemble the crap out of that item. Meanwhile, Sniper has himself a Chrysalis. He's farming himself a Chrysalis all this time. Let's go and take a quick look at Adams. Diffuse Blade up on Spectre. We already know that. She finally has himself a Yasha. Uh, actually, she has a Yasha. She's had that Yasha for quite a while. Uh, we got Daedalus up on Jorans. We got two Agon Scepter. We got Agon Scepter on Jakira. Agon Scepter up on uh, Ogre Magi. And Death Rock might be going out. Sniper is going to be doing all the damage in the world. He needs like a few more attacks and he's not going to be able to get it. Naga used the illusion, uh, used the net on the, wrong on the wrong one. And she actually donates her life. And uh, wow, okay, I, I, to I totally called this game at like 40 minutes, and this game's definitely lasting a lot longer than 40 minutes. Oh man, oh man, I'm so bad at this, and I know, and I don't know how long the game lasts. Well, it would seem, it would seem, that uh, George is not powerful enough. She per she's pretty much down in like 5 hits, Sniper has a superior farm, as you guys can obviously see. Spirit Breaker, he's doing a really good job making sure all the supports can't really do anything, he's just, like been been destroying the crap out of Jakiro. Jakiro trying to build up a sheep stick and he's like, he, he just builds up an ultimate orb. 
He has no buyback, he has no more gold, and he's a long ways away from that 2700 gold for that last piece to it. But Sheep Sickle back would be really nice versus the Sniper if you can, one, use it on the right one, and two, well, use it on the right one. That's really it. Because Sniper's been popping his man to sell pretty much every single Siege. Uh, meanwhile, Tinker, if he hasn't really become much of a factor, he did build a Dagon, and I... Uh, oh god, he built a Dagon. Tinker built a Dagon, and he didn't build Booster Travel. I am disappointed. I am extremely disappointed, Tinker. I must say that much. Me, me personally, as a player of Dota 2, I am disappointed that I don't see Booster Travel. Because Booster Travel and Tinker, it just makes it the attack. ultimate mobility. Like, it makes... It's the reason why Tinker's... Are, like, everyone's afraid of Tinker. It's because he can travel around anywhere. He can be anywhere at any time on the map. And you won't know it. Or you will know it, but by the time you do know it, you're instantly ganked by five people around the middle of nowhere. So... And oh, by the way, Tinker can put the pressure like crazy. Like he can pretty much throw a march machine here, throw another march machine, and then go back home. And then come back up top, and then throw a march machine in this lane, and then throw a march machine here, throw a march machine there, and then TP back home. And then come back mid and throw a march machine here, throw a march machine there, and then TP back home, and then TP back into the jungle, and then have a team fight with his teams, and TP back home, and TP back here, and push the lane again. And basically, it puts extreme amount of pressure on the side of the Dire. And the Dire are relatively immobile. Or immobile, if you guys want to use it that way, pronounce it that way. Um, if you look at it, the only person who can move, who can move all that fast between lanes Dyer's is really Death Prophet, because she moves top. crazy fast for no apparent reason, especially if she has speed. She doesn't. Doesn't really matter, but she still moves pretty fast, and she can just move between lanes almost on par with Tinker. Of course, it'll take a, a little bit longer because she's actually walking and or floating, and Tinker's TPing all over the place. But my point being, that Spectre, not Spectre, Death Prophet is probably the only one who can actually respond, to, respond fast enough to the pushes. And meanwhile, we got the five man push coming out from the Radiant. These guys, these guys are like, yo, bro, screw this. We've been pushed around way too long. We're going to go ahead and go in and kill. It's like the nerds versus the jocks. Or well, the nerds are the Radiant, and the jocks are definitely dire. I'm saying, because Sniper, Sniper's totally a nerd. And George is definitely a jock. Or a cheerleader, if you guys want to put it that way. Meanwhile, Spins is coming in. He's like, hey, bro, I'm going to pop my Blade Melon to stand here. Sniper getting the kill on top of George. Showing you guys how much damage Sniper can actually do if you build the right items on him. He has a Crystal, he has a Man Style. I'm very proud to see that. Uh, meanwhile, we see on George, she has pretty much standard George. That's all we got a fight happening around the corner. We got Death Prophet does go down. The Ghost are doing crazy amounts of damage to everybody, but it wasn't enough. Naga taking all the damage in the world. She'll be going down. The Courier coming out from the Radiant side, just coming in. He's like, yo, ball, yo, bros, you got your item. I'm a, I'm a ball, so I'm gonna actually be. Uh, walking all up in his base to actually go for the kill. And Spectre actually, I think Spectre could actually kill Naga just by standing in the tower. Because of Desolate. Anyway, Naga, not Naga, Spectre taking a lot of damage. She will be going down. That ulti, the ulti coming up from Jakiro. Look how, look, how, look how far it goes. It's like he can reach you from his sound. But it doesn't matter, these guys are losing their mid racks, which means this middle lane will always be pushing. Meanwhile, down bottom, Organ Magic trying to do what he can to kill his bottom tower, but he has no damage, really. 120 damage, and he's attacking at what attack speed? Uh, don't, don't forget, guys, this is with Bloodlust. He's attacking at 209, which is just a little bit over halfway to max attack speed. It's been possible Blade Mail once again, because hey, bro, I'm gonna pop a Blade Mail every single fight because I'm a boss. He throws out his ulti, and he promptly goes down afterwards. Meanwhile, Spearbreak is trying to run. He did throw his charge to actually go for something. He is building Basher, which is the silliest thing in the world, guys. It's it's silly because he won't be able to finish it. Radiance bottom like like you guys see right now, he has 1,942 gold. And then when he's once he buys that Basher, he's gonna be the saddest saddest bear in the world. Attack. Meanwhile, Sniper builds himself a full Daedalus. It is up. He is ready to fight. He's been doing all the damage in the world, as you guys can see. He pretty much killed Joranger pretty darn fast because Mad Style plus Chrysalis plus. Kill, or plus uh, auto attacks of Georgia equals death for her because she has no, really no survivability. It's, it's pretty much uh, glass cannon versus glass cannon. Sniper has no survivability either, but he has a lot more survivability than Georgia because he has a Manta style. They essentially have the same exact item build except for Georgia has a yeah Georgia has a blade or shadow blade as opposed to a ring of Aquila. Uh, we got <laughs> Sniper just just chunking away at uh, Ogre Magic. He goes down pretty darn easy. Speedbreaker does finish him off though. So Spirit Breaker, Spirit Breaker with the kill secured, and let's let's go ahead and watch him. I, I want to see from player's perspective. Oh. Radiant's top tower oh, yeah, yeah, is under attack. From player perspective, on Spirit Breaker, I want to see what he does. Okay, he's going to the shop. He's he's looking at something. 
Okay, 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 there we go. Yeah, he, he just realized he can't build Basher on Spirit Breaker because he already has Bash. So he's going for MKB instead, which I think is what he should have been going for the whole entire time. MKB, really nice item. It gives you a lot of damage for no apparent reason. It's pretty darn cool. Let's go ahead and hide on that. We did get to see a nice little perspective coming out from Spirit Breaker. You cheeky Spirit Breaker, you. You angry bastard. Anyway, moving on down to top, these guys, or the Dyer finally responding with a counter push of their own. They're gonna go ahead and try to go in for as much as they possibly can. Jarge is doing all the damage in the world for herself. Look at her go down. Oh man, she's taking all the damage for us. Finn, will you be able to make it alive? He's gonna go ahead and stand still for a few seconds. He should have kept running. Or, or, nah, I think he's trying to pop his dragon boost. I don't really know. But they were broken. Sniper just coming out, mopping up everybody. Spectre got a double kill. Sniper got a kill on top of somebody important. And. That is like a huge ton of events. Basically, Sniper is just destroying the crap out of everybody. Nobody's really focused on Sniper, and this is letting Sniper do whatever he wants. And once Sniper, let, once Sniper gets to do what he wants, he, he, well, he's a dwarf, but he still trolls. See what I did there, guys? See what I did there? Honestly, the, the biggest issue I see on the side of the diary is that basically, Naga hasn't been using her ulti at all. Like, I've seen her use her ulti, like I said, once. This entire game. And she's level, she's level 17 right now, which means her ulti has a 60 second cooldown. Which is perfect because a 60, or in, in the late game, which is where we're heading to right now. Um, you expect to see a team fight every 60 seconds. I say this all the time. It is true, relatively speaking, depending on the game. Of course, if you have a uh, more scrappy team versus a more scrappy team, it might be a team fight every, you know, 40 seconds or something like that. But it still holds true, it still ranks true. It's a general rule of thumb, and it works out. But Naga hasn't been using her ulti at all. She uh, Ogre Magic turns around, throws out a stun on top of the Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker doesn't give a care. Actually, I think he hit a creep instead. Maybe we got a lot of damage getting to Naga. Naga does go down. We got a whole bunch of damage coming up for Ogre Magic. Two Spirit Breakers. Spirit Breaker might be able to go for the kill. Uh, he will be able to get the kill. No, Triple Kill comes as a sniper. But Spirit Breaker does still go down to the tower. <coughs> the sniper just feeling super happy about his item build. Uh, you should feel you should be happy about yourself, bro. Look at look at this. He, he's going toe to toe with Joranger and destroying the crap out of him. No shadow play for you. Ultra kill for a sniper. He might be able to actually go to the fountain, get a kill on top of Takiro, and get a rampage as well. Or he might just die right now. We got tornado stick coming out from Ogamaja. I'm not too sure for what. It was, it was not really needed. Uh, there's the macro pie thrown out by Jakiro and his sniper gun to be going down on the corner. Should have ran like could. The sniper doesn't really have any escape mechanism. Like I said before, it's pretty much glass cannon versus glass cannon. Joranger, she well, she can't stand up the sniper, which is a huge issue because <clears throat> sniper outranges Joranger significantly. Uh, Joranger's range is what 600, 600, is it? Yeah, 625 sniper's range right now. It's 850, so he can just he can just play he can play the game of the game of range. And George will lose that fight every single time, especially considering the fact that even if George is in range, Sniper is gonna kill her before she can kill him. Now, if Sniper would have or would have something like a Satanic, I mean, he he'd just be like destroying the crap out of George and not feeling any of the damage that she does to him. But a Satanic would be really nice for Sniper. Basically, it gives him life still. It also gives him a lot of strength that he de so desperately needs to stay alive, and also gives him the ability to just life or if if things do get that that bad, he can just turn around life leech. Or turn on his uh turn on his unholy rage. Wait, is it unholy rage? What's it called? Un unholy something. Yeah, unholy rage. Cool, I called it right. He can use his unholy rage, which increases life still by 175% for 3.5 seconds. So what that basically means is that the life still goes from 25% life still, which is a lot, to uh what is that? 200 percent life still. And um, j just to put this into perspective as well, um, the, the reason why I, the reason why I say it a lot of times that life steal is overrated is because life steal that like you know the mask of madness is a general life steal item. Uh, life steal for that is you know what was it seventeen percent a big wolf seventeen percent home. We see a gauge happen on top again. Ogre Magic trying to run away, or trying to run away. He can't really do it. He's getting perma bash, and this is what Spirit Breaker does well at. He has his MKB as well, so there's pretty much no way this uh, Ogre Magic can actually do anything really. Um, if if only hit a hyperstone and AC or AC and then a male stone or a male deer. Um, he'll be attacking faster crap and perma bash and any and everybody that he comes um, comes close and comes in close contact with. But like I was saying before, hold on, hold on, we got Jarnji trying to go for a man fight with, with Sniper, but Sniper's just ending her life uh, completely. We got the support coming out from everybody else trying to make sure Jarnji gets out alive, but Sniper says, bro, I give zero explicit words. I'm going to run away while I can. We got Spirit Breaker charging in. He saves his ally life. Double damage for Sniper. Not what you want to see. And he actually might be going down. He does go down. Uh, we got Jakiro throwing the ice path around the corner. Catch off Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker in a little bit of trouble now. Uh, I think... I think Sniper decided to turn around and go for the fight. Um, that's probably... That's definitely where he screwed up, of course. 
you guys saw right here before uh, his basic sniper got a double damage. Like, hey, I can kill her fast enough. But Death Harbor had a little bit too much HP. That Bloodstone definitely helping her survivability. She's also been a sheep stick as well. Uh, moving over to wait, does Jakira have a sheep stick yet? He does. Cool. And he's also building a sheep as guard. Whoa. I think he just bought all the pieces that he could possibly buy. But anyway, um, I was saying something about spirit. No, I was saying something about life still. Yes, life still. Seventeen percent. It's over. Oh, life still is already because seventeen percent uh, at early levels. Like say you say you do a hundred damage. Seventeen percent life still. That's seventeen HP you're gonna heal, and that's not a lot. That's that's not a lot, guys. It's it's like especially especially considering the fact that you're attacking slow to begin with. So you're gonna be stealing seventeen life every two minutes or something like that. It's, it's it, of course that's a huge exaggeration, but it's overrated. But right now life still not life still. Um, right now sniper is hitting for a hundred no two hundred. 260? Let's just go ahead and say 260. Him hitting for 260, that, that will definitely, definitely justify going for life steal. That will definitely justify going for a satanic, which is a really nice item for sniper. Because, like I said, it gives him the, uh, it forces him to build a reaver, which gives him 25 strength. And also will give him the helmet of dominator, which gives him the 15% life steal until he gets the, uh, of course, until he actually finishes the item. Which will give him 25% life steal, which is huge. Because 25% of 200, it's like... Or sorry, 25% of 250, that's, what is that, 75 life still, something like that? Or is that, no, it's something lower than that. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like, I don't know. Naga taking a lot of damage in mid, she will be going down soon. And Sheep Stick used by Jakiro on top of Sven. Sven needs to get outside of Macropy, he's taking a lot of damage, and he goes down. Meanwhile, Tinker walks inside as well, and like, hey bro, what's, what's all the help up about? Uh, he's gonna be able to make it out alive, Spectre pops your ulti. Oh, no, net coming up from Naga, and these guys will be going in for it. Jakiro, uh, Jakiro, Naga able to finish off with that Riptide. Meanwhile, Spectre picks himself up MKB. Mm, interesting choice. But everybody's getting level 25 already on the side of the Radiant. This is, uh, pretty much the Radiant have been continuously farming, as you guys can obviously see. Because everybody is on, on the Radiant is essentially 25. All the important people. Sven and Tinker, nah. Nah. Tinker's died too many times to be important. Sven, Sven, Sven. Nah, that's all I say, Sven. I mean, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is he's not a penguin. He's obviously, he's obviously a, what, what was it, a boobin? That's what he was? I don't know, that was, a, that was a reference to a movie. I'm not going to tell you guys what movie it was, because it will spoil the movie for you guys. Actually, it won't spoil the movie for you guys. But, it may, it may make it a little bit sadder. So, uh, we got Jakiro, like I said, building a Shiva's guard. That would be nice for him to have once the team fights do break out. But his team has been derping extremely hard in the team fights. Uh, pretty much, the Radiant have just been five manning and then able to kill everybody on the side of the dire and then push a tower. And then r rinse and repeat. And that's pretty much what's been happening. Uh, the Dyer have been breaking down when it comes to team fights. I honestly think it's a result of Daga. Naga maybe being new to her hero and not necessarily knowing what to do with all that damage and stuff. And Sniper comes forward and Sniper's doing a crap ton of damage. Like he's doing all the damage in the world. Like I said, he needs that satanic. And I, I, I honestly think he's going to go for a heart, which I think is a huge mistake. Now Sniper needs a satanic because it, it just makes it so much better. Or actually, no, Sniper needs a BKB. He needs a BKB. This is Ogre Magi, this is Jakiro, this is a Naga. Dyer's oh, he can't stop the Naga. But this is Ogre Magi, this is Jakiro. Uh, they can pretty much lock you down for quite a while. Especially when uh, Ogre Magi. Since, nah, especially since Ogre Magi has himself a Blade Mill. Kind of Blade Mill. Agony Scepter. So Jorah is hitting for a lot of damage. She's actually built up a Mask of Madness, which is going to be to her death a lot faster. Basically, Sniper's going to be able to just eat her down uh, because he can do a lot of damage. The Mask of Madness makes her more vulnerable. It makes her more vulnerable than what she already was. Now let's consider this, guys. Base, uh, let's consider this. Jorah has been dying pretty darn fast. Or, yeah, relatively fast uh, when she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sniper, right? So think of how much faster she's gonna be dying when she has the extra 30% incoming damage coming to from Sniper, or coming from the Mask of Madness. That's that that's like it, it doesn't really matter. It kind of nullifies completely the fact that she has 70% life still. BKB charged pop by Spin. Spin wants to go all in on a fight. He's gonna go for kill on top of Death Prophet. It's only coming out from Spectre. The team fights will happen. Everybody's confused. All is confusion. Nobody really knows what's going on. Spectre, not Spectre, uh, Death Prophet taking a lot of damage. Plus don't pop, killing everybody, helping out a little bit. Spectre just says, I don't give any care about your stun, I don't care about your multicast, I'm gonna go ahead and go for the kill. Jakiro taking all the damage with the wall, Spectre going all in, and this is where this is why Spectre this is why Spectre does so well in the ultra late game. Uh, this, this is this is technically the late game. Ultra late game would be like, you know, maybe like an hour and ten minute. But this is this is technically the late game. 
This is the part where Spectre becomes crazy unkillable because she has so many stats, she has so much HP, and the dispersion basically increases her effective HP about 22% from all sources of damage, and it's just, it's just, oh man, it's just crazy. And yes, yes, that was a heck of a comeback. I honestly, I honestly want to say that was off the back of the uh, sniper. That's all it was. And oh, by the way, guess what, guys? Guess what, guys? This game was sent in by the sniper by Snatch. So thank you, thank you, Snatch, for sending me this cast. Uh, this was an interesting one to cast. Uh, I, I, I will say this much. I will commend you for learning so much so far, so fast about Dota because I've seen a lot of improvements in your play over the cast that I've done with you. And I, I actually see this. I actually see this a few times. Or if, if people keep sending me the cast. Then I see like the, the general progress, and it makes me happy to so you know that like, oh man, they're getting better at Dota. They're starting to learn things, and they're starting to know things. And one day they'll be just pub stomping me, which makes me sad. Cause it's not it's not all that difficult to destroy me in a pub, by the way. Cause cause I I I just talk a lot. That's all it is. Which is why I'm a caster. Ha! But no, I, I just communicate a lot. You guys can see on my uh, POV videos. But anyway, enough about me. Uh, thank you, Snatch, for saving this game. You're improving. Keep improving. I like the fact you built the match style. Bef like like I, th I think when we first started, you, just, you used to try to build like a straight up butterfly, and I was like, no, no, that's not, th no, no, build a build a man style, build a man style, and you built a man style, and you built treads, and it was a reasonable build. Ah, you're learning a lot, man. It's so crazy. I, I can't express how happy I am to see uh, you're improving Dota. Anyway, um, as for everybody else, um, I'm not too familiar with anybody else, so I'm, I was gonna go ahead and go down the line and talk about people. I start off with the Tinker on Tinker Booster Travel, man. Just get Booster Travel, Dag on. Don't worry about it. Slow ring, don't worry about it. Don't uh, if 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 you're very confused about how to play Tinker and you want to do like a rocket laser thing, that's really not the recommended thing to do. Cause rocket laser Tinker that takes a lot of uh, a lot of map awareness in my personal opinion, and also it also requires boots to travel as well. Cause rocket laser Tinker he wants to be involved in those team fights, and the only way he can actually get to those team fights is like say say there's a team fight happening in the middle of in the middle of the river and there's no towers around. The only and there's a whole bunch of creeps. The only way you can actually get to that fight is by teleporting to the creeps or getting recalled in. But let's, but we don't have Coddle here, so it's no recall. So having booster travel is essential. It's pretty much a core thing for Tinker to have. Uh, yes, it's expensive as crap. It's a reason why it's expensive as crap because it allows you to do so much. So, but once you have them, they pretty much pay for themselves hand over fist. I mean, it's ridiculous how much they pay for themselves. But going for a rocket laser Tinker, uh, you want, that, that pretty much tells me that you want to be involved in team fights. That tells me that hey, when a team fight breaks out, you want to laser the carry and then rocket. Just spam rockets all the time, all in the world, and just kill all supports, and possibly kill the carry, and possibly kill everybody else as well. So rocket laser tinker is more geared towards that, as opposed to the pushing type tinker, which is what you typically see uh, when they have march marching machines max, and they have the well, hold on, just yeah, yeah, marching machines and laser, I guess marching machine laser, and they just have marching machine max, so they can just spam that crap out of that, and then anybody that walks into that, they don't like they pretty much take a crap ton of damage for no apparent reason, and it destroys creep waves, which pushes the lane. Which is what you want as a pushing tinker. So if you're going for rocket laser, you still need boots to travel. If you're going for a push strat, or if you're going for the uh, march machine tinker, you still need boots to travel. My point being that Dagon level three is not going to get you a lot of kill, or not going to get you as many kills as boots to travel will. Also, boots to travel does backfire, and you will probably die a lot once you start you start using boots to travels. Uh, you might TP into the wrong spot, and then you get instantly five people from the diary over there, and you're just pretty much dead. So all that goes a long way to say, build booster travel, please. Just build booster travel. That's that's a TLDR version version of it. Moving on to Sven. Uh, man. Okay, cleave first. Don't ever go for cleave first. I mean, it's it's like it's like only a few instances where you might want to go for cleave first, and those few instances are if if you know for a fact there's going to be absolutely nobody in your lane and you want to push the crap out of it, if or if you guys are going for some crazy loony strategy like you have a Vincel Spirit plus a Luna plus a uh, I don't know, somebody else that gives you extra bonus attacks, or that can give you bo extra bonus attack damage at early levels, then don't go for that cleave first, man. It's it's not, it's it's a waste of a skill point. Honestly, honestly, in my personal opinion, on, if you're playing Sven as a carry, um, having your cleave at l before level, I'll be generous, I'll, I'll, I'll say before level 5. Having your cleave before level 5, it's, it's, it's a mistake. It's, it's a flat out mistake. I mean, it's, it's, don't do it. It's not worth it. You you have other spells that do a lot that that are more that you're more relying on. Like even maxing your war cry will actually be a lot better because if um putting more points inside your war cry that reduces the cooldown. It also increases the armor that it um, gives you, and it's really nice to have more armor when you're getting ganked and you're the carry and you're just trying to farm. So you can actually <clears throat> so you can actually make it out alive. 
Or put more points inside your storm hammer, so your storm hammer does more damage. Yes, it doesn't really do anything. I mean, yeah, sure, like like it scales up by like a hundred or something like that. But that's that you know that could finish somebody off. That could do a lot of damage to supports. Like say as a crystal maiden, and she only has like six hundred HP, you could throw a storm hammer. That's pretty much half her HP gone, and then you can just kill her by like three attacks. So definitely go for things that are not cleave, because cleave is not worth it. Um, cleave. At early levels, it's not worth it. Cleave at late levels, I mean, late game, when you when you have a Chrysalis and you have a data, or sorry, when you have a Daedalus and you have a Heart and you have a Sanj and you have a Heaven's Halibird plus a Sanj, I mean, and a BKB, Cleave is really nice like then. But before that, I mean, it's not really worth your time. Anyway, moving on to Spirit Breaker. Uh, you're being very aggressive. You're being more aggressive than I would like to see. A spirit breaker be especially considering the fact that your lane partner is a specter who really doesn't or really can't help you out with those big ganks so if, if you do charge someone like a jakiro and then you try to go for the kill on top of them you're, you're kind of on your own all specter can do is throw a spectral dagger and then and then sneeze on them that's all she can really do at early levels uh, late levels i mean specter can help you out a lot she can throw a diffuse blade charge she can throw out the uh well yeah she can throw a diffuse blade charge she can pop her ulti to possibly get closer to him if she, if she needs to or give you vision if you need to charge and it, she's more useful later but early on in those laning stages yeah you're, you're kind of on your own and because you're on your own because you're it's kind of your responsibility to babysit the specter then just 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 stay back and you know don't be as aggressive because if you die then the specter's gonna be all alone and she's gonna be sad and she's like i have no friend in my lane of course it's not that's not what she's actually gonna be thinking but my point being, don't be so aggressive early level, uh, in, the, in the early levels, especially when you don't have somebody to support you. Now, if, if you were to, like, just start ganking the, cr the crap out of top, then that would be really nice because you have a spin on top and he can follow up stun or he can lead up stun. And then you have a tinker as well who can pretty much burst them down. So, say those ogre, or say you guys want to go on Ogre Magi, that would be a pretty easy kill for you guys. Basically, spin will start with a stun. And, oh, hell, was Ogre Magi top? Yeah, Ogre Magic stuff. So uh, Sven, Sven can start with a stun, and then you can finish your charge and actually hit him with your stun, and then Tinker can rocket laser him, and that's a lot of damage done. And then, oh, by the way, you guys are still auto-attacking in the process of all this. So, definitely assess where you're charging. Also, the Vladimir's offering... Eh. Eh. Vladimir's offering, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, de definitely, like, t typically Spirit Breaker is really nice are really used for permanent bashing people. Well, that's pretty much how I see it. Spirit Breaker has a really nice ability called Bash or Greater Bash. Of course, we all know about this one. But if you can attack fast enough to just pretty much permanent bash somebody, then you can you can essentially effectively shut down completely a carry or shut down one person completely. Like say it's a, say it's a support with a big stun or say it's an Enigma who wants to pop his ulti. And uh, you just like get your focus on top of him. You get your stun. You get your ulti off as well. And you just perma bash him to death. That he can't get his ulti off. That's gonna pretty much make sure that the team fight is in you guys' favor for all the time in the world until he responds, of course, or if he buys back. But if he buys back, it's even better because that means you force the buyback out. So my point being, uh, attack speed is a little bit more valuable in my personal opinion than anything else. Life still, life still is overrated. Um, a lot of times you see spirit breakers go for. A mask of madness, which they go for purely for the for the attack speed. Um, everything else about it is pretty bad. Uh, the life still, yeah, sure, cool, but the 30% incoming damage that you're going to take an addition or additional 30% incoming damage that you're going to take is not worth it at all. It's never worth it. I mean, it's especially if you don't benefit too much from it. Like like er early attack speed is what people use it for. Like I said. So so I'll pretty much leave it at that. I'll move on to the next person, which is definitely a sniper. Uh, sniper. Like I said, round of applause. I've seen like you sent to me in a lot of videos, and I get to see you improve, which is actually really nice. And I see that you did really well in this game, which is cool and all. And oh yeah, but I will say, I will say, if you have an item, use it. Uh, you, I saw you use your Manta style a lot, which I really, I really liked. Cool, that was awesome. But you had your magic wand, and it had 15 charges for I think the longest time in the world, and you never used it. There's a few times where you might have been able to survive like one, one or two more auto attacks, but it's, it's still the. Uh, the, the thought process of saying, oh, I have a magic wand with 15 charges. I can pop it and then maybe make it out as alive. Like, you can give yourself a fighting chance as opposed to just standing still and dying. So, really, all I say now is uh, just just keep working on your keep working on your positioning because your positioning is still, still questionable. I mean, even my positioning whenever I play my games is questionable because I'm still bad at Dota. But, but that's besides the point, guys. I, I am the one running this video. Gosh darn it. And I move on to Spectre. Last but not least, Spectre on the side, of the rating side, that is. Um, 
Yeah, you you got your farm, so I can't really say anything. Um, I, I, was, I was gonna say, oh man, you, you were doing like bad and blah blah blah, but I mean that's, that's to be expected. Spectre is not good in the early game. She's not good in the mid game. She's only really good in the late ultra late game or late game. Um, if she has that good of a start, then she can be really nice in the mid game too. Like you know, maybe she has a diffuse blade plus a Yasha, and she can actually help her team out with kills. But that's really about it. I mean, late game, when she has her Diffuse Blade, has herself an MK, well, I'm not sure about MKB, but has herself a Diffuse Blade, has herself a Daedalus, has herself a Butterfly, has herself a whole bunch of stuff that just kill the crap out of people, then she's really nice, and she just can kill everybody on the enemy team all by herself. Heck, even a Battle Fairy. But, my point being, um, don't, don't be as aggressive, or, sorry, uh, try to continue to not be aggressive in the mid game, I guess I'll say that. Because I, I, I can't say for sure if you were being a really aggressive in the early mid game. But I did see a few times where you're trying to go for a kill against Naga. And she just pretty much just turned around and just shot you in the face and you died. Or hit you with the tide or rip tide and you pretty much died. So be a little bit more cautious because your gold is valuable as a specter. You want to hit that stride as soon as you possibly can. And it's really hard to hit it really fast because specter she needs a lot of farm like I said. Uh, she's really survivable because of her dispersion. She can do a lot of damage because of her desolate but until she gets some more items to help out of her illusions which are actually is a really nice part or really big part of her damage uh, her ultia is um, then she can't really do too much she can't be really be all that threatening and after she uses illusion she's not really all that threatening either. anyway if she doesn't have like a diffuser blade or a radiance or anything else so anyway my point being my point being um, make sure you be very passive in the early game be very passive in the mid game only go to the team fight if you can actually go and get a kill and that, that's a very vague thing to say, I know, but if you see a team clash happening and they're on, like, your side of the river and, like, they're, they're diving your tower and they're taking a lot of damage, you can TP in and say, oh, I can pick that person off, TP in, uh, get a kill, get another kill maybe, and then go back to farming. So, that's pretty much all I'll say about Spectre. Uh, move on, moving over to the Dire. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Last, thing, last thought on Spectre. Um, like I said, just, just basically make sure you farm your items. Just, just, continue, just be in farm mode for 30 minutes. 40 minutes, and then at the 40 minute mark, come and join the team fighting and kill everybody. A uh, moon on to Death Prophet. Eh. Uh, not much to say. I mean, you, you you could be a little bit more aggressive towards Sniper in mid, but then again, that'll be really difficult because you, you throw out a Cryptic Swarm and Sniper gets you a 4 auto attack before you're able to get away. So, I mean, it's, 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 a, really to it's a really big toss up. Can't really say too much. Uh, let's, 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 just, let's just leave it there. Let's just leave it there. Moon on to Joranger. Oh man, so many things to say about Joranger. Okay. First of all, Double Wraith Ban. I do not like Double Wraith Ban. Um, I really wish it would go and die in a fire pit. Um, because Double Wraith Ban is like, it's it's a waste of 525 gold or what, however much it costs. I think it's 525. No, it's, wait on. It's not. It can't be 525. It's, it's a waste of 945. What, whatever the price is. It's a waste of that much gold. Because the Wraith Ban. Oh, wait. No, that's right. It is. It is 525. Because Ring of Us Studies costs 500. And then. Yeah. I, I, I don't know for, for whatever price it is it's a waste of that much gold. That's all I'm trying to say um, Yeah, sure. It's not it's not all that big amount of gold But if you think about it, it it's it's the difference between having your treads at your power treads at the 10 minute mark or having power treads at the 13 minute mark which could make a difference. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't think of a case where it would make that huge of a difference but it's it's not it's not it's not building towards anything It's just like counterproductive and at the end of the day you end up selling both of them anyway so I mean it's it a, a lot of people like to look at it as like, oh, I'm transitioning into this. But in my personal opinion, you can just build yourself a Wraith Band and then build yourself a Basilius and let that build into a Ring of Aquila and keep that on for the whole entire game. And if you look at the numbers on it, Basilius gives you an additional 5 damage, if I'm not mistaken. And Wraith Band gives you an, gives you an additional 9 damage. Um, I think I remember that when I looked at it. Plus, some, plus a few other stats, which are really nice. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, you're pretty much getting, what, what was that? What's five minus nine? Oh, four. You're getting essentially four more damage, which I mean, four four more damage versus something that builds into something, and then building yourself or building other things. I mean, it uh, honestly, I I don't like double wraithman. That's that's pretty much a point, guys. That's my point. I don't like double wraithman. Um, talking about everything else though, um, you build the mask of madness. You really didn't need to build a mask of madness, especially since you build it extremely late. Um, for the longest, you had yourself a Yasha, you had yourself a Daedalus, you had yourself power trades and a shadow blade, and I don't know what else you had after that, but 
it definitely wasn't a Mask of Madness. And then once you got the Mask of Madness, it, was pretty, it pretty much told me that you were just desperate to attack Sniper faster. Because you were thinking, oh, if I attack him faster, then I can figure out which one's the real one and actually kill him. No, Sniper's doing all that damage because he actually built something reasonable. He built a Manta style, which is a really good item for Sniper to have. Because, it, like I said, it, it, it gives him an escape ability. Oh, it doesn't give him an escape ability, but it helps him out uh, as far as making sure that he doesn't die as fast when a team fight does break out. It also gives him, it also increases his DPS because the losers do still do quite a bit of damage. 28% uh, damage is what they do on the range of losers, as you guys see it there. And 28% of the damage that Sniper's doing is a lot at that point in the game because he was hitting for like 300 and like maybe 600 when he was critting or 700 when he was critting. So 28% of 700 damage, say, say they all crit all the time, 28% uh, 20 20 of 700 damage is a lot. That's all I'm trying to say. So build yourself a man style, you'll love yourself later. Just just go and take Ayasha and fill, fill, finish out the man style and then build whatever you want after it. Build yourself a satanic. Uh, if you want life still satanic. If you want attack speed, more agility. I mean I, I can't the butterfly, there you go. That's what I was looking for. Build yourself a butterfly. I'm um, gonna organize you built yourself an active scepter very fast, which is really nice. It made you a little bit more effective in the mid game, but you didn't really use it to your advantage. I honestly don't I honestly don't think it was your fault. I think it was more so your team's fault, because nobody's really going to gank around or look for anything to go for. And uh yeah, your your items are really decent. I mean that's all I have to say about that. Moon on Jakiro, uh, same thing, same exact thing for you. I mean I can't really complain too much. Yeah, yeah, Agonist after which I think is kind of a waste of gold. But at the end of the day, it does give you some nice stats as a support. And it's cool to have. But what what you're not getting by getting the Agonist Scepter is you're not getting the wards for your team, you're not getting the uh, well, you're not getting the wards for your team, let's put it that way. Because basically you and Organ Magic are both fo focusing on farming your big items. And not having those wards pretty much into a lot of lives. I'm moving on to Naga, it's the last person. Use your song, that's all I had to say. And I actually have to cut it off now because I, it's late and everybody wants to go to bed. So, um, Naga, please use your sleep. If you have your sleep, use it. It's, it's, it helps you stay alive and it's a few times that you die because you didn't use it. But anyway, um, I'll leave it at that before I get kicked out of my room. Or of the room that I do my recordings in, and then have to go to bed. <laughs> go, go to bed, you. Go to bed, young man. But no, no, my, my parents don't actually say that. Well, they they kind of do, but they don't tell them I said that. Anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoy the cast. I'll see you guys whenever.